Hello everyone, it's been a little while since I've made a video, but progress is being made on my uh, on my CNC machine. As you can see from the cabinet behind me, um, control is in, drives are in, and I've started to started to wire those things up. Um, it's taken a little bit longer to make some progress than I thought, um, but uh, I, will, I do intend on making a couple more videos on uh, finishing off how the how the cable management is going to work. Um, so the, the, the last videos I've made um, covered how I was getting cables from here um, to the various parts on the machine um, and I thought maybe this video I could just update on where I got to on there um, and what was left to do. So that's what we're going to do. So the cabinet, get plan, the cabinet gland plate has now got um, various wires sticking out of it, and lots of which aren't connected to anything yet. but. Um, I've also marked up what they're all doing. Um, so the wire that's coming out here is going to go to the driver here, um, and that's connected on the other, the other end. Will be connected to um, the stepper motor for the x-axis. Um, then this one for the stepper motor for the y-axis, and then same for for the z here. Um, and then the limit switches, which we'll talk about in a bit more detail in a minute, um, come through here, um, and then. Oh, I can't see it's a bit of a tangle of wires now. Um, but that's that's then connecting via um, by the 24 volt supply and then back up to the controller. I've also wired in the e-stop. Um, the e-stop now not only connects to the e-stop that's on the front here, which is this guy, um, but also runs all the way back to the other e-stop that's sitting on the machine this end. Um, so those guys are in series with one another. So whichever one you press, it cuts the power to the drives and sends an e-stop signal um, again back up to the controller. Um, there's another video based on, uh, on how my e-stop system works. Um, and then the other three are for the proximity home switches. Um, which again, only one of which I've actually wired in so far. Uh, I can cover in a little bit more detail how that works at a later date. Um, and then these these blue and yellow cables are the beginnings of um, the drives um, alarm signals, which which go up to the digital inputs here, which are what I've been focused on starting to to wire up on the the IPM at the top there. The step and direction outputs. Um, those will run run round um, and into the drives here um, and then these guys will then connect into the drives this end and set the signals out to the stepper motors. So then underneath then here's all the, uh, the various cables over this side there's um, power coming in. I've got a power cable um, that's supplying or the main Supply, power supply for for all of this lot, um, and then up there, still to come, is the variable frequency drive for the spindle. Um, that has its own power supply, um, which again comes through the same switch. You can switch it all on off at, on and off at the same time. Um, critically, they're not connected to one another. The two supplies, so you don't end up with one plug kind of having mains electricity coming out the um, at the sort of plug end. Uh, but they are all switched together with um, with this same rotary switch. Um, so that's what that's what's coming in that side. Um, uh, I've got uh, then all the the wires sort of trail the way down, and then so it's a bit tight in here, um, and then run up to feed into the first of the cable chains, and then around this cable chain, along the back into the next cable chain, around that one, and then feeding out. And at the at the other end again, it's just a, a sort of unconnected tangle at the moment. Um, but in terms of what they the various ones do, so via these little junction boxes, um, which again I want to um, talk about in a little bit more detail at a later date. Um, I've got these, which are the limit switches. So they feed into the junction box, and then along to the next one. This one's going to go out and over across to the other side of the machine. Um, then this one feeds into here and around and then into this one out to this guy um, 
and then around again into here which then feeds up and to the z-axis and this will come out to the two ends on the z-axis and then via this end uh, over to another limit switch which I haven't yet fitted on that side um, and then all these are for the proximity switches um, power to the and signals to the dry to the um, stepper motors um, and the same this side uh, there's, there's this guy which is going to be wired into these cables which again I'll cover on another video um, so it's the, the kind of bones of the wiring are, are starting to, to be in place um, but actually getting it all connected up is very much still to be done. Um, the, other, the other big piece left to be done is um, installing the plate on the front of here for the z-axis to run up and down um, and, and also all the switching that, that goes with that so the proximity switch which I think I'm going to fix through here so that it pops out the other side similar Flush into the proximity switch that's sitting through there with a little target um, at either end here and then at either end on the, the z-axis. Um, the, these little limit switches, um, so if I bring the gantry down, let's see how that works. So that's actually going to just put, oh, no, sorry, that all tangled up. Um, you can see there that plate just bumps into the switch. Um, and that will then send a signal up to the IPM to say um, it's hit the limits. So it's getting exciting because it's getting, it feels like it's getting really close. Um, I've got most of the parts that I need now apart from the uh, variable frequency drive. I've got the um, cabling here for um, connecting the drives to the controller. Um, I've still got <coughs> a bit of my CY cable, although I've got through mountains of that stuff, um, to finish wiring up the all of the limits in the homing. And then I'm pretty well, well, getting, getting closer, getting closer. <laughs> 